This is the second part of the measurement tutorial uh, for using AUKAD. We've calculated ADM for this differential amplifier in the first part. We're going to calculate ACM with this uh, very similar uh, differential amplifier. However, the input has been shorted together, so we're calculating V in uh, as a common function, and we're only looking at one output, uh, a, um, V out A, so we're not bothered about the differential output. So we're looking at single ended in, single ended out to calculate ACM, the common mode gain. So I'm going to turn on the input signal here. I'm going to double click on that one. And I'm going to turn on the output signal here and double click on that one. Let's go to our probe tool and find out what happens. Well, uh, as far as it looks, it's, it's just a flat line green here at some DC level and a flat blue line at some DC level. The reason that they look flat is because they've got very low uh, sinusoidal uh, oscillations on them. They are work, they are moving, but they don't look to. Let's um, delete uh, one of those values. As you can see here, here's our output signal. We do have sinusoidal movement on our output, but it's quite low and it is centered on a DC level. Okay, I'm going to delete that uh, measurement for the moment, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, so I'll delete that waveform as well. Let's go to our calculations. So here I've already got some pre-canned values that we want to measure. We want to know what the peak-to-peak -peak input signal is. So let's put that into our probe tool. Okay, paste it in place. We've now calculated 9.9 .9 millivolts as our peak-to-peak -peak input signal. Let's find out what our output signal is, peak-to-peak. -peak. Let's copy that one. Okay, we're pasting that one in as well now. We found that our input signal peak to peak is 9.9 .9 millivolts and our output signal peak to peak is 2.6 millivolts. So our output is smaller in magnitude than our input. So the amplifier has attenuated the signal. That's quite important. Let's now calculate the gain. The gain, oh sorry, let, before we do that, let's just have a quick check and let's find out where our output is biased to, our DC bias level. So that's the output voltage peak minus the output voltage uh, trough, the lowest point. Divided by 2 gives you the midpoint. Add in the lowest point gives you the DC level. So I'm copying and pasting that into our um, probe tool for measurement. We find that our DC level is 7.336 volts. Okay. Again, you've got quite a good precision there in your calculation. Let's now go back and let's find out what the peak-to-peak -peak output voltage divided by the peak-to-peak -peak input voltage is in common mode. OK. And we will plot that. These goal functions are very fast, aren't they, at getting these measurements. We determined from this that our gain, ACM, common mode gain, is 262 milli. Okay, there's no volts, no no current here because it's a ratio. It's the output voltage over the input voltage. If it went in milli, this would mean 0 0.262. So you can clearly see its attenuation. So let's do the last part then, shall we? Let's have a little look. Let's go back to our circuit diagram for a moment. We found out that our gain of the differential the differential gain was about 97 and our common mode gain is about 0.2. So we're going to find out what our common mode rejection ratio is for this circuit. This is quite a complicated um, expression. Let's just work it through. This term is the peak to peak um, the peak to peak output differential uh, divided by peak to peak input differential. Okay. So that's our ADM value. And then here we have our ACM value, where we have our peak-to-peak -peak output common mode voltage and our peak-to-peak -peak input common mode voltage. And then we've gone through a mathematical function called log 10. Now, if we go back to our probe tool for a moment, remember when we were evaluating our measurements, we have these measurement functions, but we can also have analog operators. So, for example, we can have the absolute value and remove signs, arctangent, 
uh, average, cosine, and so on. If we move further down, we see log and log 10. So in this particular implementation, this software, log is to the power of e. Okay, so that's a natural log. Log 10 is to the base 10, and that's different. So let's copy and paste this common mode rejection ratio equation, which is quite complicated, and it's been forged from those previous calculations that we've done. And we will paste it straight in to here, and click OK, and we come up with 51.39, OK? 51.39 decibels, which is exactly what we would expect for this circuit. So let's go back to our design. This differential amplifier is not a very good one because we've got a resistor in the tail. Therefore, we, we, we have a limited impedance here. And it's that impedance that effectively reduces the common mode rejection ratio. So I hope you, I hope you appreciate this, um, the measurements that we've taken. And you've got a bit of an insight not only into differential amplifiers, but how to use AllCAD to make some measurements.